Welcome to the third in our series, How To Be Good. This time I'm talking to Beverly Dixon, who does human resources for a large Cambridgeshire agricultural business. Uh, talking to her about farming, but more widely about what she calls the triple bottom line. Beverly Dixon, what does it mean to you to be good in farming? Mm, interesting. So good in farming, I'm probably not qualified to completely talk about that. But what I'd like to do is look at it through, um, through the lens of people, really. Because um, I think I can give a better spin um, on it from my perspective about what it means to be good for people in farming. So what does that mean? Well, there's... The, the, there's one business that I'm involved in that actually has set what I think is an amazing challenge and it really inspires me so that to me means it connects with what I like doing and what it means to me and that is their challenge is to operate and measure and and report and live by the triple bottom line so measure that business in terms of people profit and planet and do it all in equal measure. And by doing that, they, they're looking to inspire others and motivate others to do business in a different way. Can, I we, think, break down, can we break down the three bits of the, of the yeah. triple bottom line then? So yeah, so the people, profit, planet. Well, so if I, I'll, I'll think people first. Um, and if I kind of dig underneath that, at its most, fundamental sense and what I spend a lot of time doing and focus on is really about upholding human rights and worker rights. That is, that's at its most fundamental sense. And then when you start to build on top of that, what good business from a people perspective means to me is, is creating a great place to work and a great place to work being where people actually want to spend their time where people have got friendships, where people have got inspiring work that they really want to do, that connects with their values. And then also looking at it from the point of view that the customers actually want to deal with that business and buy their products, suppliers want to deal with the business and sell their products. So the whole piece comes together um, about what it means to do good in business. But. Does enlightened self-interest cover the whole mm. thing? Does doing good always do good to you as a business? Or mm. are there points at which you have to choose Where is it? You know, between doing good and yeah. the success of the business? Or does it always work together? Well, there's the obvious tensions. There's the obvious tension of the people profit planet. Is it easier to focus on the profit bit? Because without that, you're in a much more difficult situation and then you can't invest in people and, and planet. Because, you know, ultimately, if profit isn't, in my book, a dirty word, because we've got to have that, that, um, that foundation and then do the right thing and do good with, with that. And it's about, um, it's about that shared value throughout the, the whole of the supply chain, really. Is this philanthropism on your part? Are you being nice? Oh um, no, because it is about profitable business. So um, you know, to to be a, a a good business, as I say, it is about doing business well and in a in in a way in which generates the profit, and then the responsibility is to do the right thing with it. And also, it's kind of a virtuous circle, making sure that you do the right thing and and operate in the right way it, in order to generate the profit. Um, so it's kind of not at all costs. Does it put a business at a competitive disadvantage to be trying to be good when competitors can go, stuff being good, we'll just mm. be ruthless? Well, I'd argue the other way. 
I'd argue there's commercial advantage by operating in a good way. Why? But again, it's tough because to be able to demonstrate the value on this triple bottom line measure, it's really hard to say, please customer, could you value in financial terms the way in which we are doing business? And, and also then it, it then falls on the, the regulatory boards. You know, are, are, can we be confident enough that those people who are not operating in that way are pursued through regulation and, 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 and governance bodies so that it's pretty obvious and apparent that good business is rewarded. And, you know, when you're, in a, when you, when you're working in a business that's um, high intensity, low margin, it's all about volume, it's all, it, 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 it's all about um, doing things just in time, it's all about doing things um, continuously, through, you know, 24-7, then um, that, that's quite a, that's that, that that's one of the things that um, you know we we find hard to do. How much of this is visible to kind of the the, the ultimate consumers of these things? When people well, think, buy a box of blueberries yeah. or a box of raspberries, yeah. do they think about where it came from? And well, I think more so, more so, and they will be able to. Just think when we when we do you know, move into kind of that utopia where blockchain's used and you can trace that particular strawberry right back to how it was grown, who grew it, who picked it. You know, you'd be able to get all the information you could possibly want to know if that's important to the consumer. And I think there is a, there is a movement in a way for people to want that. And ideally, they would value the food and therefore pay for it. And, you know, again, coming back to these sustainability goals, it is about encouraging responsible consumption and, and responsible production of food. So anything that we can do that invests in technology, that shares that information, makes it more public, the better. What do you think people misunderstand mostly about the ethics of farming? Um, well, I think um, I think occasionally, um, you know, I'm I'm nervous about saying um, this is and standing out and saying this is what good business looks like because as soon as you put half a toe out of line, <laughs> then the the pedestal will crumble. So it isn't about that, but yet. There's something about being able to share knowledge and share information and collaborate with others that means that it's better if you do communicate. Mm. So there's a real tension for me there that's, you know, how, how do you kind of galvanise that connectivity um, even though you don't want to sound sanctimonious. Yeah. It's reported that there's 40 million people in modern slavery and it wasn't eradicated in the 19th century that most people would prefer to think it had and we do a lot of work to look out for it so some of the things that we do we aim to employ all of our all of our colleagues directly seasonal or permanent so direct employment is the preference and we but we do work with some agencies around the world and we work with those agencies because it's collaborative because what we want to do is provide employment for people and so it is about setting the standards that we want to operate to and often the UK law and company policies from the UK are slightly higher than what you might find in other in other parts of the world and we bring people along with us we don't say we're not working with you we do work with people and we help to improve the way they do business because the, I mean, the other stereotypical social anxiety about farming, mm. apart from the modern mm. slavery one, mm. is is the one to do with Eastern European workers at yep. low, low wages yep. compared to, yep. to British wages. Yep. Um, Often accused of having access to cheap labour. Yes. Completely <coughs> a misconception. Um, so all of the people that we employ are paid the national living wage at least 
and all of those people, have, or, or the majority of people, have then got the opportunity to earn more, um, and depending on, on, on production levels. So we have people who are earning significant amounts of money that would be deemed, a, a, by any standards, um, a good average earnings. And what we, what we aim to do is to enable people to earn as much as possible within a reasonable working week. So what would be wrong is to pay people a low hourly rate and expect them to work lots of hours. So we work out what is a reasonable working week and we set the targets that, that those people will earn a good wage where they can um, have enough money to save and spend. So that, that's our target and that's our definition of living wage. In the slightly longer term, I saw a news item about yeah. trials of a raspberry picking robot. Yes. Is that going to make your life easier or harder? Yeah, that, that's so um, robotics, automation, any level of innovation, it's got to be right. And from a people perspective, uh, you know, for, to my mind, and there is this conundrum, do you employ more people and pay less or do you employ fewer people with innovation and mechanisation that is enabling it and pay them more? I would rather pay people more for real meaningful jobs and give people that decent work and move it to the next level. But boy, does that take responsible business because it is about investing for the future and knowing that that's a good thing. Um, investing for the future in terms of those robotic pickers, then we'll need people that can men, you know, the engineers that can design those robotics, the engineers that can actually fix them if it goes wrong, people to coordinate that piece of work. So that's providing people with a higher level role. And through the productivity, we'll be able to command higher pay. Um, but it will take some training, learning and development because it's about good business for me is about growing from within and taking the people that are currently in business and helping them operate to their full potential. There's the third one of the, the triple yes. bottom line, the planet one we yeah, haven't talked about, no. because there's another ethical area here about the effect of, yes. of your high intensity business yes. yeah. on the landscape you're doing it in. Yeah. Is that a solved problem or a work in progress or a, or a worry or what? It's not a solved problem, that's for sure. Okay, how do we treat the planet better? How do we how do we invest as much back into the planet, take as little out of it to be able to produce nutritional food for lots of people? And we know that there's um, you know, there are people who are hungry around the world. How do we make sure that we are producing enough nutritious food in the right place? And what we can do and what we are doing is um, working to reduce food waste. Mm. And we know in the UK the majority of food waste is wasted in the home. But if we look at what we can do in that supply chain, it's a, some of it is about matching, trying to get better at matching what we produce, when we produce it, with when it's needed. And if, and if you're in a business whose promise is to delight our customers every day, that means we always have to have product if we're delighting our customers every day with the standards that's being set at the moment. Now, if the consumer sees us delighting them in a different way, then we'd operate in a different way. But at the moment, it's about pleasing that, that customer, which means that you have to have some spare. So the challenge is, is to how to reduce the amount of spare capacity that you've got. And how do we get to that? And is it through back to the innovation mechanisation? Is it back to people compiling data and analytics and al working with algorithms and, and all those sorts of things that they do that I don't completely understand? But then how do you get the best out of them? Because actually if they, if they're, if they are doing that, then they probably look a bit odd, work a bit in, in an odd way compared to everyone else. Therefore, how do they feel part of it and uh, get the best? Hang on, are we saying that 21st century farming is going to adapt partly by becoming weirder? Yeah, I think it might do.
Yeah. I think it might yeah. do. I think it's going to look totally different than what it than what it perhaps does today. Thank you very much, Beverly Dixon. I think we might applaud now. Yeah. Yeah. Next week on How To Be Good, I'll be talking to Andrew Brown, presently of The Guardian, before that of The Independent, about how to be good as a journalist. What are your thoughts about ethics in business? By all means, leave a comment. And to make sure you don't miss any of the series, subscribe on the Ely Cathedral YouTube channel and click the notification bell.